powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday. I'm Janelle Slade. Governor Steve Bullock issues another directive, this time making sure Montanans keep a roof over their heads during these uncertain times. Well, we're asking Montanans to stay home to stop the spread of this virus. Montanans need to know that we got their back. The governor protecting Montanans who are staying home as the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases across Montana jumps once again. Now that number reaching 198 confirmed cases late this afternoon, including another death. So far, five people have died from COVID-19 across Montana. The state has not released any further information on the latest victim. More than 4,500 people have been tested so far across the state. Now those increases include two in Yellowstone County and the first case in Muscle Shell County also reported today. Gallatin County with the most confirmed cases adds another five this afternoon, bringing the total there to 74. Governor Bullock issued another directive today banning evictions, foreclosures and late fees during Montana's stay at home order. The governor is saying Montana should not be without a roof over their heads right now. As the stay at home order continues and businesses close, it's going to be tough to come up with money for rent and utilities. So today, Bullock focused on easing some of those hardships by prohibiting landlords from evicting people or charging late fees during this time. Now, let me be clear, this directive, it's not a free pass on rent or on home debt. Tenants and homeowners still need to meet their obligations and should do so on time where they can. But so long as this virus forces Montanans to stay home to save lives, Montanans need a home to stay in. That also means providing for essential utilities that allow Montanans to remain safely in their homes. The governor was also asked about comments he made in a call yesterday with President Trump stating that Montana is one day away from running out of test kits. If we lost one day, or if all of a sudden we had a huge spike in testing, all of a sudden we'd start creating a significant backlog along the way. Um, raised concerns last week about it. We got at least for now an extra number of test kits. Um, had a call with the director of FEMA uh, last Friday expressing some of the concerns as well. Um, this is something we're working on each and every day. Now, another thing the governor did indicate is that the stay at home order could possibly be extended. So the economic uncertainty that this is causing could last a while. Well, vacation rentals seem to be up in Montana as people may be fleeing major cities adversely impacted by the coronavirus. But how will Governor Steve Bullock's 14 day self quarantine order impact their stay? Now, according to the vacation rental site AirDNA.co, rental demand is up in the Billings area with 205 active rentals right now. And the occupancy rate is at 80%. That's up 8% from last month. However, Bullock just yesterday directed that travelers arriving from other states to Montana for non-work related reasons must undergo a 14 day quarantine. Bullock's director, directive also says the Montana Department of Commerce should advise vacation and rental sites about the quarantine. Now, according to the site behind Bozeman, Billings ranks as the second highest for annual guests visiting Montana. Well, our neighboring state of Wyoming has another confirmed case out of According to lo local authorities, as of this afternoon, there are 109 positive cases. So far, no deaths and more than 1,500 have been tested for COVID-19. Fremont County still has the most positive cases coming in at 25. Well, in case you were wondering if the Keystone XL pipeline might fall victim to the coronavirus, the answer is an empathetic no. As oil prices plummet and social distancing becomes the norm, Canadian firm TC Energy announces it will be moving full steam ahead with the multi-billion dollar project. Q2's Jay Cohn joins us tonight with more on today's big announcement. Good evening, Janelle. Just when some of us thought that this pandemic, coupled with the staggering drop of the price of oil, might spell a death knell for the Keystone XL project, up steps the government of Alberta, Canada with a $1.1 billion investment today, a lifeline, if you will, that might kickstart the Keystone project once and for all. And on top of that, I've learned that the company plans to have shovels in the ground tomorrow morning. 
This to begin to dig the trench across the U.S.-Canadian border north of Malta. I've been told the plan entails using a limited crew, just that sh small stretch of land that's controlled by the Bureau of Land Management. Now, this will be done under the nationwide permit granted by President Trump last March. It's a permit, by the way, that's currently being challenged in court. TC Energy's announcement Tuesday that it plans to get to work. It's a sudden reversal from last month when the company acknowledged because of too much uncertainty, it would simply not be able to fully commit to the project. The $1.1 billion investment from the Alberta government apparently will fund the project through the end of the year. And TC Energy says over the years, it will give the North American economy an $8 billion shot in the arm. TC Energy President and CEO Russ Gerling saying, quote, this important energy infrastructure is poised to put thousands of people to work, billions in economic stimulus, and strengthens the continent's energy security. The 1,200-mile Keystone XL will deliver some 830,000 barrels a day of crude from Hardesty, Alberta, to Steel City, Nebraska. That's where it'll connect up with TC Energy's existing facilities, eventually taking that Canadian crude to the U.S. Gulf Coast refiners. Important, the company says the pipeline is expected to enter service in 2023. So that's the situation as of tonight. Exactly what will transpire tomorrow morning is anyone's guess. Will there be protesters in light of this pandemic? Highly unlikely. In fact, some environmental groups are suggesting that's part of the company's strategy on why they're moving forward right now. But nonetheless, a big day for the Keystone XL project as the company gears up to what it says and is planning to be a big construction year ahead. Janelle, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Jay. Now, Jay mentioned the legal issues swirling around the Keystone XL. Six environmental groups, including the Northern Plains Resource Council and the Sierra Club, continue to press their case at both the state and federal level. In Montana, the issue is permits to cross state waterways. The state of Montana received the company's water permit requests only earlier this month. Now, those permits require a hearing and a public comment period, none of which has yet happened. And at the federal level, the BLM's record of decision on the project states that no construction can move forward until the company has all necessary permits in hand. Well, another water alert and advisory issued tonight for the Warden Ballantyne Yellowstone County Water and Sewer District. That warning issued late this afternoon. The latest tests in that area show source water is influenced by surface water and needs to be disinfected and filtered. Chlorine disinfection has been increased, but that is not completely effective against all possible contaminants. Because nitrate levels are above allowable levels, boiling water is not an option for treatment. Bottled water is the safest alternative. Well, the City of Billings Public Works Department is urging people in the, in the community to refrain from flushing items other than toilet paper down the toilet. Scott Emmerich, Superintendent of Water and Waste of the City of Billings, shares the items that are causing trouble. Now, Superintendent. Well, right now with the shortage of toilet paper, people are uh, using a lot of non-flushables. And it, when we talk about that, they're mainly like, uh, oh, some of these cleaning uh, personal wipes that are made out of some woven, uh, say, uh, cloth or fabric and uh, they don't disintegrate in the sewer. And as a consequence, they ball up, collect in the lines, and then cause a sewer backup. Youch, and Superintendent Emmerich warns that if people continue to flush these items, this could lead to a sewage leak in basements. Well, tribal officials on the Crow Reservation are implementing roadblocks to protect the community from COVID-19 spread. Here's a look at the checkpoint about eight miles south of Hardin on Highway 313. There are four of them total around the reservation. Tribal Incident Command officials say they are mostly in place to inform people about orders from the tribal government. Late last week, Crow Tribal Chairman A.J. Not Afraid issued a stay-at-home order for the reservation consistent with orders given to the rest of the state by Governor Bullock. Checkpoints are also in place to keep non-tribal members off the reservation. The, the portion of Interstate 90 that crosses the Crow Reservation is still open for travel. As of Sunday afternoon, Not Afraid said there were no positive COVID-19 cases on the reservation. Now, Not Afraid also said Sunday that out-of-state travelers with campers looking to set up shop on Crow lands were kindly asked to move on down the road. Now it's time to take a look at weather with Ed McIntosh. We had a little bit of snow, we had a little bit of rain, and a little sun. We did.
It was the variety pack today. Yes. Yeah. But as we take a look regionally right now, it isn't that much different than what we were looking at yesterday. It's colder and more unsettled in the western portion of the state. Check out Cut Bank right now at only 18 degrees, but sunshine at least breaking through across the eastern plains, readings 30s and 40s. But compare that to where we were yesterday. Right now, billing 16 degrees colder than at the same time yesterday afternoon, 26 degrees colder in Glendive, 28 degrees colder in Williston. And I mentioned how cold it was in Cut bank they're right now at 32 degrees colder than just 24 hours ago so the chill will continue to move in the snow will move in as well but it doesn't really last that long we'll take a look at those forecast details coming up in just a few minutes with your complete forecast all right thanks so much ed well the billings catholic schools foundation says it will cancel this year's mayfair carnival due to coronavirus the mayfair is the foundation's signature fundraising event of the year it would have happened on sunday may 17th the foundation president says the decision is in line with recommendations from the yellowstone county public health officer to reside the risk of possible coronavirus exposure in the meantime the foundation board is exploring the idea of holding fundraising events similar to mayfair in summer or fall well, new today, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks has shut down its group use sites. This includes all fishing piers at Montana State Parks, fishing access sites and wildlife management areas due to the risk of high congregation of people. A few fishing access sites and wildlife management areas do remain open, but public opportunities will be limited in those areas. Overnight camping will no longer be allowed. To accommodate current campers, campgrounds will close within a 72-hour notice. Beware, bears are emerging from dens in northwest Montana. According to the state wildlife officials, grizzlies typically stay around the den for about a week before moving to areas without snow. They forage for food, so here's your reminder to remove or secure garbage, bird feeders, and bird seed. Well, up next, it is Takeout Tuesday. We highlight a hot spot in Billings that will also have you donning a sombrero. And later in sports, if you're chasing ways to stay in shape right now, Scott has you covered with Q2's Athletes of the Week. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.